All right, let's look at mean value theorem, which is actually the title of this section. But we did roles, and now let's look at mean values. The mean value is more generic, I would say. So here it is. If f, which is my function here, is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval, because they are always differentiable on the open because you're not looking at those endpoints, then at least one point C, at least one point C in, oh my, oh my. I was looking at my book and not what I was writing. In this open interval again, right? In the open interval, such that this happens. F of B minus F of A over B minus A equals F prime of C. Now let's talk about what this is. I'm going to clean this up. That bothers me looking at that. A comma B. Okay, so let's look at this. What is it over here? Well, I mean, what are my criteria? Let's talk about that first. It has to be continuous. Good, because if F is continuous and what? Differentiable. Same two first criteria as Rolle's theorem. Now, here's the deal. Those are the only two criteria I have to set up in advance for mean value theorem. I'm not concerned that I have that first and last point are the same. That's what makes this one more generic. All right. So what this is saying is I have this part. Tell me what that looks like. It looks like a slope, right? And it is. So I'm saying this over here is the secant slope is equal to this, which is what? What's a derivative again? That tangent. Yep, slope of the tangent line. So I'm saying there is, if this function is continuous and differentiable on this interval, then somewhere my secant slope and my tangent slope are equal. So check this out. I'm going to do a little drawing. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit here, I think, so that I have more space for my drawing. Because I think that's helpful. So if I have this, and then I've got, I don't know, let's go blue. Uh, I have that curve, because why not? I have no other reason. Then somewhere, oh, somewhere down there, crazy. Oh my, oh my. Here I am at A, and here I am at B. So somewhere from A to B, I have this secant slope. So f of b minus f of a, right? There is some secant slope. And I'm saying that there is some point c. Let's see if I can make it happen here. Where my tangent line is parallel to my secant line. Because anytime you have slopes that are equal, what does that mean? Parallel. So equal slopes is parallel. Parallel. So I'm saying somewhere along here, if I have this secant slope, I have a tangent slope that equals it. That is the mean value theorem. It has to be continuous, so I have to make sure that I'm still going the whole way. It has to be differentiable, so smooth, continuous curves there. No asymptotes, no cusps, any of that kind of thing to throw it off. And then I've got some value C. Okay, let's try it. So again, we have to set up our criteria. I'm going to do 4.2.21. And we're going to use the mean value theorem in order to pull this off, where I have f of x is equal to 7 minus x squared from negative 1 to 2. Two criteria. Criteria number one, is this continuous? Criteria number two, is it differentiable? Now look at that. What is that? It's quadratic, right? It's a parabola. So that's a polynomial, and that's what a quadratic is. So is it going to be continuous and differentiable? 
Yes, yes, yes. Both of these are because it's a polynomial. We already know that. Okay, once I've got that set up for me, then I can look at this formula. So now I'm gonna take f of two minus f of negative one all over two minus negative one. So we are going to take our value, I'm gonna squeeze this back up here so it looks bigger. We're going to take f of two, plug it in there, get that value, f of negative one, plug it in there to get that value, and then that is going to be set equal to f prime of c. And that's what we're gonna to try to figure out. And some value of c, I'm gonna write this as f prime of x because we're going to solve for that x. All right, that's what we're doing here. Okay, let's plug everything in. If I plug in a two, I have seven minus two squared minus seven minus a negative one squared all over three, right? Two plus one, because you add the opposite. Okay, and then is equal to my derivative. My derivative here is a negative two x. So ultimately, I wanna figure out what is that x? We're gonna solve for that x. Well, we need to simplify this left side over here a little bit more in order to pull that off. So seven minus four minus uh, six, right? Because it's gonna be seven minus one. So we've got all that over three is equal to a negative two x. I know, well, check this out. This is even nicer if I add the opposite of this. The plus seven and minus seven cancel. Negative four plus one is going to be negative three over three. So negative one is equal to a negative two x. Now it's simplified, so I divide both sides by a negative two, and x is equal to a one half. So when you say where, using the mean value theorem, on my open interval, is this working? Look at this one half. Is one half fit in my interval? Yes, yes. So what is this actually saying? We well, are saying at x is equal to a one half. The secant slope is equal to that tangent slope. That's what we're actually saying there. All right, that is the mean value theorem. All right, Rolle's theorem, mean value theorem, do a couple of proofs, go rock the socks off this stuff. The biggest thing is you have to try to remember what those criteria are. So pay attention to that. Make sure you're writing that on your paper when you practice. All right, good job.